welcome back everyone to another video in our series on how to make a 2D platformer game. This is Mike Page with ScriptingIsFun.com. In this video we're going to put in our sword attack. So when we hit our attack button with the sword equipped, we want the enemy to receive damage if he is close enough to be hit by our sword. So the first thing we need to do is set up uh, some sword zones here on our player. So let's go take a look at our player here in our scene view. And what we're going to need to do is have a collider that we can turn on and off on either side of him. So that uh, if he's facing right, we're going to swing to the right. And if he's facing left, we're going to look for damage to the left. So we're just going to add a couple of empty game objects like we did for the laser positions. So we're going to create an empty game object and we'll call this sword right. And then let's uh, go ahead and give that a collider. So physics 2D. Let's go ahead and do a box collider. And let's go ahead and size this down. So let's just edit the collider here. And what we want to do is hit anything that is maybe within about this much space here when we swing the sword. Uh, and let's go ahead and shrink that down a little bit. Doesn't need to be quite maybe so big. But anyway, we're defining an area here. We're going to go ahead and mark this as a trigger because we don't want it to block anybody coming into it, but we do want it to launch trigger events, and that's what we're going to use to see if the enemy was hit by it. So we have our collider set up here on the right side. Let's go ahead and duplicate this by right-clicking Duplicate, and let's rename this to Sword Left. And then we can just move this over here to the left side. And now we have one on the left of him and one on the right of him. And they're both marked as triggers. And then what we're going to want to do is actually disable these game objects here. So we only want to turn it on when we are attacking. So next let's get that functionality in there for when we push our attack button with the sword equipped. We uh, launch a function that will turn on one or the other of these little collider boxes depending on which way our player is facing. That way he can only ever hit the thing that's in front of him. So we're going to uh, need to go into our player script. And in the player script here we're going to need to have a link to those two uh, game object colliders that we have. So let's just um, stick that in our list here of variables. So let's make a public game object and we'll call this uh, sword left and public game object sword right. We'll link those out in the inspector in a minute here. Uh, and then we're going to need a function that's going to be called when the sword has been uh, triggered. So let's go down here where we're doing our different attacks, unarmed, Here's laser attack. Let's go ahead and stick it right underneath here. So we want a void. We're going to call this sword attack. And uh, we're going to use an animation event to call sword attack like we've been doing here before. And we're doing something similar to our laser attack. So we're just going to say if we are facing right then what we want to do is turn on that right collider. So we're going to say sword right dot set active true. All right, if we are not facing right, then we'll do our else. And we will say sword left dot set active true so that will turn on the collider either the left one or the right one when it is called the other thing we're going to want to do is have that uh, collider turned off uh, at the end of the attack here so I'm going to turn it on just for a fraction of a second and then turn it back off again so what we're probably going to need to do is have another function here. Let's call this void 
call it sword attack done. And then inside of here, we're going to turn those swords back off again. So we can actually just copy this little check here and paste it in. And we'll just change these trues here to falses. And that will get called after we're done attacking with that sword swing. And that will turn those back off again. All right, so now let's go out and see how we can uh, set this up in Unity and use some animation events to call this. So back out in Unity here, we are going to, first of all, want to go to our player and his script. And we have now these two new game objects here, sword left and sword right. So let's drag sword right into sword right and sword left into sword left. So that is now connected. Let's go into our animator controller here now. So we want to switch to our sword controller. So let's go in here and get player sword. Let's go ahead and actually give that to the player here so we can work on it. So let's just go ahead and put player sword in there as our animation controller for now. And then we can see here's our player sword animation. And what we're going to want to do here is go into the animation here for the sword attack. So let's look at that in our animation window here. And let's look, go to sword attack. And what we want to do is add in two animation events. One of those events is going to call the sword attack script to actually turn the colliders on. And the other one will be uh, to call the sword attack done, which will turn the colliders off. So let's uh, go just a little bit into the start of the animation. Let's go ahead and add the animation event. And what we want is sword attack. And then let's go right here to the end of our sword attack animation. And let's add an animation event. And this time let's call sword attack done. So now if we were to test this, we should see those colliders turning on and off. So let's click on the player. Let's look here to see what happens with the colliders. Let's go ahead and hit play. And if I attack now, you'll notice that the sword right collider appears and then it disappears again. If I face the other way, the one on the left appears and disappears again. So there we go. We have our colliders turning on and off when we attack with the sword. All right, so that's working fine. So next we have to deal with actually causing damage to the enemy, our red enemy up here, when we hit them with that collider. So that means we're going to need to go into our enemy script now, and we're going to have to set that up. Now, the enemy is going to need to know what it was that hit them. So we are going to have to put a tag on these two colliders so that we can actually check to see if it was a sword that hit the enemy. So let's go ahead and just select both of these. I click the first one, shift click the second one. Let's go up here and make a new tag. So add tag, hit the plus sign there, and let's call this sword. And we'll save it. And then let's go back out here, group select these guys again, and let's select the sword from there. That way they both get it at the same time. So both of them are tagged as sword. Now we're going to go into our enemy script. So red enemy script. And right down here in our on trigger enter 2D function, uh, we're checking for a laser. Let's add a section here for we're checking for the sword now. So it's the same idea if other, so that's the other object that just hit the enemy, and we'll check its tag. And if its tag happens to be sword, then we know we've been hit by one of those sword colliders. And if that's the case, then let's just do this stuff right here. Again, eventually we're probably going to move some of this into its own uh, function because now that we're using the same lines of code more than once, it's usually good just to make a function to handle all the types of damage that can happen. But for now, this will work so we can test it. So we'll take away five health points. We'll check to see if he's dead. Um, and then we should be good, right? That should take care of it. So let's go test it out and see if we lose five health when we attack the enemy with the sword. 
All right, so we're selecting in on the enemy uh, so we can see his health variable down here. Let's go ahead and hit play, and let's see if we can actually damage the enemy here when we hit him with the sword. So let's jump up here and hit our attack button, and you see his health dropped to five, and if I do it again, he disappeared. He was destroyed. So there we go. We have our sword attack implemented, um, and this is a, kind of a technique that's used in a lot of fighting style games where when you launch different kinds of attacks you turn on and off different colliders to see if you hit. Uh, and there's obviously always several different ways to do anything in programming, but this one here is an easy way to implement a melee based attack where you want to um, make sure that the enemy is close enough to be hit and on the right side of you. So I think that's good enough for this installment of our video, adding in that melee sword attack to our game. I hope you're finding this useful and helpful. As always, if you have any questions, just leave those in the comments below and I try to get to those as quick as I can. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.